So, like Phil said, I'm clearly not a local. Um, so I'm from Cambridge, intern, still undergrad, still got a bit of university to finish. So uh, there's my Twitter handle, uh, security operations analyst intern. So I cover pretty much everything, firewall configurations, general, NSM, malware analysis, practically everything you can think of. Uh, sometimes I try and do some red team stuff, but I suck at it, basically. Um, done a few CTFs, uh, done quite well in them, but I'm forever a blue teamer. Um, I play video games, so is anyone on Steam here? A lot of people, as expected. So um, how many phishing attempts have you guys had? You, you see this random shit coming through all the time. <laughs> it's fantastic, mostly rats, but yeah, I analyze those every time I get them, they're brilliant. So why are we here? Uh, what is Drydex? How does it operate? Distribution infrastructure, what's a locky? So I've, I've seen a couple of people that don't understand what that is. Um, how scary is the future, Sev? Terrifying. Really terrifying. <laughs> and obviously to look at kittens. Mandatory. First talk, it's got to be done. So Drydex, it's been around for a while. Um, I say a while, for me it's a while, 2014. Um, it's evolved from several different malware families. Uh, has quite a complex net network infrastructure, which I'll move on to very shortly. Uh, the target is everybody, but when I, when I go through it a little bit more, you'll see what I mean. Um, it is and it isn't everybody, but we'll, we'll cover that. As you can see from the figures there, it's making a lot of money from, from its first year. It's crazy. I mean, it's up there with ransomware, if not above ransomware, and Drydex is still going, so it's pretty scary. So this was the end of 2015. This is from a semantic report. So apparently, Drydex was taken down. <laughs> I don't think so. And same again. But these are human. Look at that. They take weekends off. They take Christmas, New Year. These are humans. They're not robots. I thought they were robots, but clearly they're not. They're doing well. And again, Drydex is up there. It's huge in terms of banking Trojans. That's the one to look out for. And Drydex, I mean, anyone that's done analysis on this will know that it's not just a banking Trojan. There's a lot in there that's really terrifying. So we started looking at Drydex. And um, interesting story with this. So I was maybe three months into my internship, taking my lunch, um, fired up my VPS, started looking at a Drydex sample. And um, I got called away to quite a severe incident, so I just locked my machine and left. <clears throat> left this running, and thanks to the BackConnect module on Drydex, which turns your machine into a proxy, you, you fire through the traffic, you become a C2, basically. Because of that, I got this abuse complaint. Um, I have redacted to its from, but when I saw it, I almost cried. It was very scary. And top left, Drydex Twitter account. The first thing they tweeted is, hi, man, I like you. I'm doing something right. But that, that really annoyed me, so... Um, I spent a few months just hammering Drydex, getting sample after sample, noting down their C2s, reporting it to friends in high places like at Talos, getting it blacklisted as soon as possible. And they turned me into an IOC, which was nice. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I mean, I'm an intern. That's good. I'm, I'm proud of that. So the components. Uh, we have the loader, downloads, core modules, and a node list to join the botnet. The core is very scary. Um, like I was saying, it's not just a banking Trojan. Um, this will redirect your HTTP traffic, steal cookies, steal form data. There's a lot of stuff in there. And VNC, again, it's not just a banking Trojan. It's essentially a rat. Uh, BackConnect turns you into a C2. Terrifying. Makes it really complex to kind of track this and what's going on. Sophistication. Obfuscated code, everything's doing that nowadays, I think. I mean, I, I don't really consider obfuscated code sophistication anymore. I mean, some of it's quite difficult to crack, but most of it's just crap. It's really easy to figure out. VM detection. So I've run into a couple of people that have told me that Drydex doesn't have VM detection, and I beg to differ. I've got a couple of samples that do detect VMs. So it, it does do it. It doesn't do it very well. It's quite basic. Um, but it is there, and obviously sandbox detection. Now, the funny thing about that is 
when you think about Drydex and you look at it in the news, it, you know, it's, it's doing really well for itself. It's generating a lot of money. But the code for their VM detection and sandbox detection was actually used, uh, reused code from a Spanish hacking forum. So they didn't write that themselves. It makes me wonder what else they've sort of stolen and just thrown out there. Um, targets all Windows systems. I don't really consider that a sophistication. I think the real sophistication with Drydex really lies in the network infrastructure that it uses. So it uses peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. I mean, I'll get onto a, a network diagram soon. There we go. Infected machines, everyday users, random PCs, PCs in the office, PCs at home. Um, the nodes are, my VPS would be a, a prime example. That's where BackConnect will kick in. Uh, it will turn the machine into a proxy and you're essentially a C2. From there, uh, traffic will go to frontline CNCs, so it's mainly like compromised content management services, uh, like you know, WordPress, Joomla, that kind of thing. And then the backend CNC, which is hidden, apparently. Uh, a couple of people have found them. Encryption changes. So I did mention Locky on the very first slide, but I'm not onto that yet. This is more talking about the uh, network communications. So back in 2014, you would find that it was using symmetric encryption. It was a static two-byte Zorky. You know, once you crack that, it's just G uh, GZIP format. It's pretty easy to figure out. Now, we're looking at something more sophisticated, definitely harder to crack, RSA 2048. <clears throat> and the Zorky is now four bytes, and it's randomly generated, so you can still figure that out. But you know, the, the, the main reason for this is um, they, you, they use Zor encryption for the traffic between infected hosts and nodes and CNCs. And then they use RSA 2048 for traffic straight to the back end CC. So that's, that's the sensitive stuff. They don't want you touching that. So Drydex targets everything. Um, as of October 2015, they are the sub botnets that were found. Sub botnet 2020, uh, 220, sorry, um, it's huge. But it's also been seen distributing other malware such as Tesla Crypt. Um, once I saw this, I was quite shocked. Um, mainly because Drydex and Locky, you know, when you, when you analyze these things, you figure out that they use the same sort of distribution network. So you, you think that the malware authors are either the same people or they're working with somebody. And then to see Tesla Crypt come through, I started to correlate them a little bit. Don't know if they're working together or if um, the distribution network that Drydex uses, which is now believed to be the Nucure's botnet, um, you know, if, if people are just renting that and spreading whatever they can. Um, Bonnet123 was interesting as well, because Angular Exploit Kit had a whole new infrastructure set up just to distribute Drydex and Locky. So again, are they working together, or are Drydex really making so much money that they can just build a whole entire Exploit Kit infrastructure and just spread whatever they want? Um, Bonnet124, that's another new one. Uh, targeting Swiss, Swiss financial institutions, but all of these subbotnets are targeting different things, different countries, different banks. So when I say they target everything, they technically are, but it sort of depends what subbotnet you run into. So file distribution, they've, they've used a couple of different methods, mostly weaponized office documents. So it, it makes sense, phishing is just the way to go if you're a, <coughs> if a nasty person with malware. All, people will always fall for that. Um, it's true, you know it's true. Uh, Rockloader was seen quite recently in voicemail phishing emails. Again, people will fall for that. There's not enough training out there and still training doesn't work for phishing from what I've seen. Um, the last point here is actually quite inaccurate. This has changed recently. Um, the executable for Drydex has changed. It's no longer six random characters, it's eight, I believe, but you know, when, when you see that um, Drydex or Locky, I've, I've not really seen any other malware sort of using six or eight random characters. Someone can prove me wrong, but in terms of huge malware that's really lucrative and prolific out there, Drydex and Locky, that's what you'd look for. Locky, it, 
it's the same as every other ransomware, isn't it, really? I mean, in terms of sophistication, it's quite painful. But again, delivered via weaponized office documents and exploit kits, uh, encryption that you, you're not going to beat, uh, deletes shadow copies of files, which is the same as practically every, every other ransomware. Mostly, I mean, we've seen what, like 150 new ransomware since January, and it's only increasing. There's like five or six last week, it's insane. Yeah, so Drydex had a revision at the start of June. Um, again, targeting, targeting different banks. This one was uh, US, China, and Brazil. And the last point is actually supposed to be sarcastic, but that probably doesn't make sense. So, set so util. It's not used to evade detection further. It's used, in this case, just to decode base64. But I was looking through tons of news articles, and they were saying, oh, Drydex is getting really complex. It's using this to evade detection. It's not. It's using it for decoding base64. It's nothing huge. Takeaway. So again, first point, I think it's safe to say that's now Nakures. Um, but there was also the 50 individuals arrested in Russia recently. Um, I don't know if that's the cause for you know, the disruption with Nakures and the disappearance of Angler, uh, which has been gone for a couple of weeks now. But if it's not Nakures, Drydex and Loki, I would say there's something, something secret going on there. There's a huge distribution network under there, and I would be inclined to say that they may be renting that out, especially seeing Tesla Crypt come through on Subbotnet 220. Uh, these campaigns aren't perfect. There's, there's flaws everywhere. I mean, ad, uh, the CNC panels have been cracked a couple of times. It's been figured out. But as you can see from the slides that we've been through, it's only getting worse. It's getting more sophisticated. And with everyone focusing on ransomware at the minute, I think Drydex has got quite the advantage. Because when you hear ransomware after everything you see in the news, it's nothing compared to just a bank in Trojan. But as we've seen, Drydex is way more than just a bank in Trojan. Uh, it's still one of the most lucrative and prevalent campaigns out there. Um, even after the you know, sort of bit of downtime they had recently, they have started to come through again in the last couple of days. Radex is coming back. Um, criminals, again, they're, they're transitioning to ransomware. We've all seen that. I mean, ransomware is not exactly new, but utilizing asymmetric encryption and stupidity, people clicking random office documents, enabling macros, it's easy money for them. And ransomware has a somewhat flawless business model. I mean, you encrypt their machine. If they pay, you've won. I mean, that's it. Any questions? Have you done any analysis on the variation in the carrier phishing emails that they're using? I've seen a bunch of different uh, formats and encodings. No, I haven't. Um, it's something I need to do, but obviously, as an intern, I'm really buried with work at the minute. I mean, this is actually a side hobby of mine. So after working as security operations analyst, I'll go home, maybe do a couple of hours work on this, and then sleep, completely pass out 24-7 uh, InfoSec. So. Um, you know, since so much ransomware and all kinds of malware these days have been delivered through uh, malicious office documents and uh, uh, macros and, and you know enabling content and stuff it seems like one of the the best recommendations if it's feasible for the businesses to push out the group policy to disable um, enabling content and macros do you know any other like remediation tactics that that might be effective for stopping different types of, of ransomware like have you come across anything that uh, you, you know you've seen to be somewhat effective or, or more than somewhat effective so Silence are developing what seems to be a really strong product. I mean, every piece of ransomware they've thrown at that, it's just shut it down. Um, in terms of you know, things you can do without throwing a load of cash at security products, I mean, you can do things like disabling executables from you know, running from temp and app data, things like that. It's just basic things. And I'd say, honestly, train users more efficient. Keep training them. Do, do like a monthly thing if you can. Just keep going with it. Other questions? Thank you. 
So we've captured some dry decks uh, a few months ago and then um, you know, re-execute it and analyze it and stuff like that. And it, uh, once they took down dry decks, it didn't work anymore. Do you have any recent payloads like you mentioned June 2nd? And how is it different? I have a sample from June 2nd. Um, the only dis difference that I've seen is the um, Bay 64 with cert util. Um, in terms of the, the new samples that are coming out now, uh, I've been out here. I've not had a chance to look at those yet. Uh, okay. Um, so they, they work currently, and the CNCs are working actively and all that? Yes. Um, so how do you clean it? What do you mean? How do you clean it off your system? Clean dry decks. Yes. Well, is it still memory, uh, memory only? So this was supposed to originally be a one-hour talk. This is completely cut down. I've missed out a bunch of indicators of compromise, which I'm going to provide in a follow-up blog post. Um, I'm going to post what I seem to consider somewhat effective remediation techniques. Um, I mean, as goes with any incident response and forensics, look for the IOCs, figure out what's going on. You know, bring in all of your data, analyze everything, figure out if it's spread anywhere. But, yeah. All right, one other thing that, that I'd actually uh, add on, my, my perspective, as you may know, is definitely on the network side. We've actually come up with a lot of network-based indicators, whether you're looking at DGAs, uh, trying to identify the likelihood that a domain or a host name is, uh, is interesting. So that's uh, another area of, uh, of interest, whether it be the command and control channels themselves, the certificates that are being used to secure it, or the, or the ancillary DNS-type activity. So it's another way of detecting, not going to prevent, but definitely going to detect. Um, this is just kind of general, but I'm wondering, particularly as a, as a student, um, how, did, how did you get into this kind of research? And do you have any tips to others who might want to follow in your footsteps? Um, so when I was about 14 years old, um, I was addicted to video games, as most teenagers were. Um, I got so addicted that if I wasn't playing a video game, I had to be watching a video game, like a, on Twitch.tv or something like that. Um, my favorite streamers started to get DDoSed, and I wondered what that was, looked into it, enjoyed learning my network fundamentals, um, pushed further and further, started looking into security. Um, had a couple of friends that were already into forensics and incident response. Um, I had a couple of chats with those people, and um, I've always wanted to catch the bad guy, so that's how I got into it. In terms of um, tips, do you mean for getting into security or into forensics or? Um, I would say look for people on Twitter. There's a lot of people out there that are willing to help and mentor people. Um, Tony Robinson, DA underscore 667 on Twitter. Um, he's taught me so much. He's given me a lot of his time. Um, but yeah, I, I mainly just talk to people. Just use Google, basically. I just look around, figure it out. But my university's taught me nothing in, the, in terms of forensics. Um, my whole course, my whole degree is essentially just Cisco, so forensics is all on me. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, Seth. Really Thank good you. to have you on, and appreciate it.